Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are doing book recommendations but with the color red. I'll explain it in a minute. So I originally got this idea just by literally staring at my bookshelf thinking, oh my god, I have so many red books or I have so many green books or I have so many blue books. So I thought it would be really nice to do a book recommendation video based on the colors of my books. And the first color that I'm doing today is red because, you know, it's the start of the rainbow. <laughs> So I have five book recommendations, but I technically have six books, but one, but two of the books are part of the same series. So I definitely don't want to say I have six books when you have to read the first one to get to the second red book. So we're just going to keep it in mind and we're going to get started with these books. So for the first two books, I am going to do the little combo deal, which would be a good girl's guide to murder and now the reason i say that these are red is because you have to read the first one to get to the second one and the second one is very very red um but these are basically about a girl named pippa and she sorry did i say pippa her name's pippa right anyways they're about a girl named pip and she's basically going to school to me it seems like it's college it's not high school but basically she has to write this paper so that she can progress into her degree or whatever finish her degree something like that i don't know i read these a while ago but she decides that she's gonna write her paper on this murder investigation that happened in her town like five years ago. It was never solved. People thought that it was this one guy that was her, this girl's boyfriend, but it wasn't, and now she's discovering it, and that's basically what the gist of is the first book, and the second book is a continuation of that, and there's more that goes on in the second book, and for me, personally, the second book is the better book out of these two, so, but I definitely recommend these two, or this series, I would say, as a whole, but the second one was my favorite, so that's why we're going with this one. The next book that I want to talk about is, of course, the one and only, the Akatar series. Now, I like the Akatar series. I know there's a lot of controversy of if you like the Akatar series, you don't like Thorn Glass. If you like this series, you don't like this series. Personally, I like the Akatar series. I didn't like the first book, per se, but the series as a whole, I would still recommend, and a lot of people love the first book of Akatar. It just... Farrah wasn't doing it for me, personally. I would still recommend this, though, because I do think the series as a whole gets better. And since it starts with a red book, I'm going to put it in this video because the start of it is with red. The end of it is with orange. So. Also, my cat was trying to rummage through my bag. So if you heard that, that's what that was. The next book I have is King of Wrath by Anna Huang. And I love Anna Huang. I love her. I love her so much. It's too much, honestly. Um, but King of Wrath is definitely a lot like her book Twisted Love if you've read it, but it has an arranged marriage trope. Now, I loved Vivian and I didn't like Dante that much, but I still recommend this because I could definitely see why people would like this book. I personally, I think, gave it like a 3.5, but I still liked it and I definitely still recommend this series because it's still continuing to come out. Like, King of Sloth comes out at the end of this month, so I'm super, super excited to read it. But I definitely think that this is a good one. Also, it's red. In case you guys are wondering, where is the red coming from? The spine is very red. And he also is the King of Wrath, and I guess that's his color. Also, look at this little thing. <gasps> Anyways, everything on the covers tie into it. Just give it a chance. But my personal favorite within the series was King of Pride, but I still have a lot of love for King of Pride. got me into the series and I love her. The next book that I want to talk about actually has three novellas within it and it is The Love to Love You by Ali Hazelwood. Now I know what you're thinking, Izzy, that doesn't literally look red, but it's a pinky red and I'm going with it, okay? Um, my favorite novella out of these was Below Zero and while I do recommend these because they're short and you can really get into Ali Hazelwood's writing, which is particularly one of the most important reasons on why I would recommend this is to get into her writing if you've never read anything by her. My personal favorite, again, Below Zero. I think it is the best one. I think that if this couple had an entire book written about them, I would read it. But the other two, they're just not my thing because I'm not into those types of tropes. So that is the only reason why I say this one is my favorite because it had the tropes, it had everything that I love, and honestly, the novellas are very short. I got through this entire book within a day or two, so I would, again, it's short, it's easy, I recommend it. It's red, and I love Allie Hazelwood. I think her writing is amazing, so I definitely think you guys should give her a chance. Just give her a little, a little itty bitty chance. And the last book that I'm going to talk about is one of my favorites. 
my all-time fave. And if you don't know me, you well, if you do know me, you already know that I love this book more than anything else. And it has put me in the biggest reading club, I think, of my life. I don't think I've ever been able, I still haven't been able to get out of it since I read this book. Excuse me, one moment. As I was saying, this is one of the greatest books of all time, in my opinion, and that is The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. And if you haven't read the series, I will let you know that this is the second book within the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, but it is my favorite book, I think, that I have ever read in my entire life. I will never get over this book. I will never get over Jax and Evangeline. I will never get over the drama. I will never get over the twists and turns. I will never get over this book. This, single-handedly, is my favorite book, and I never thought I would ever be able to say that about a book. But this is the one for me. And if you've read it, maybe you also understand my love and my appreciation for this book. But if you haven't, I suggest that you read the series now. I suggest you pick it up. Go to the bookstore. Pick it up right now so that you can feel exactly how I feel. Because this book is literally the best thing on the planet. Um, getting into it though, Jax, this is, it's really hard for me to say what the book is about because the first book is the build-up of the story for just the second book has the most action in it again which is why I think it's one of my favorites is because I like more action than I do story building so the first books for me are always mid but I will say that the book is basically about this girl who is in love with this boy in her village and she can't be with him because he she finds out he's gonna get with somebody else and it's like an arranged marriage for him and the other girl, but the girl and him end up going through with it. And then she ends up making one of the biggest mistakes ever, which is not the biggest mistake ever, but it is at the time. And the story kind of unfolds from there, okay? It's a fantasy, it's a romance, there is no spice in it, so, you know, if you're not into that, but you're into that, read it! And my last book that I want to talk about is actually a classic that, looking back on it, I would recommend and I do like, but at the time when I read it, I thought, why? And that is Animal Farm by George Orwell, and the reason that I, looking back on it, I appreciate what this book gave me is because it gave me a lot of perspective on how the world works. I would say. And it's super, literally, one of the shortest books I have ever read. And also, it's classic, so I like to be able to say that I've read a classic, even though it is literally the shortest classic ever. But that doesn't matter. Also, my version had pictures in it. But I recommend this because I feel like it gives a lot of perspective and it gives a lot of insight onto how the world works, specifically more so when you're talking about the government and how our government looks and how it is perceived and how things are basically not necessarily what they seem to be 50 to 80 to 90 percent of the time um so i do again appreciate this book and looking back on it i would recommend it to those who want to get into classics um but other than that it was okay <laughs> okay guys that is the end of this video thank you guys so much for watching if you like the video, make sure you leave a little like down below and you leave a little comment and tell me if you've read any of these books because I have read them, so I like them. But if you've read them, let me know what you rated them because I would definitely love to see it. And if you're thinking about reading my one and my only, the greatest series of all times, I would say, or the book of greatest of all times, The Ballad of Never After, let me know. And let me know if you've already read it, what you got, because that book has me in a chokehold and I will don't think I'll ever be able to get out of it. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!